begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Welcome to the Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show. Got some great news for you today. But first, my monologue. I want to talk about something that's very important to every single biker out there. That's your Second Amendment. There's an awesome story in the news today out of Lubbock, Texas. A man went to the appeals court, and the conviction was overturned. He happened to be a member of a motorcycle club. In Texas, they got this obscene law that if you're a part of a club, which they call gang, that you can't own a weapon, or can't carry a weapon, or whatever the hell it is. Even if the state issues you a permit, this is a huge victory for not only this guy, but clubs down in Texas, because they're arcane down in Texas, man. They are some of the worst when it comes to clubs. It's like they threw out the Bill of Rights down in Texas if you uh, are a member of a club especially one that is listed on that obscene DOJ criminal organization list. The Second Amendment in this country is guaranteed in the Constitution of the United States. And we have to make sure that we always fight for that Second Amendment. Now, you always got people that say, well, we need gun control this, gun control that. In Illinois, we had the FOID system, Firearm Owner Identification Card, which, okay, that's been around, I believe, since the 60s. We just recently got concealed carry. I believe we were the last ones in the United States to get that because, hey, the way... And I don't want to get too political, but the way these blue states run the guns is, it's incredible. They want you to, well, if you're in trouble, call the cops. And I think what they're doing is they're trying to apply urban situations to rural, because there's a lot of people that live in rural towns that it'd take 45 minutes to an hour to get some cops out there. And look what happened, say, in Washington and Portland, where the cops weren't even showing up. So, that's a situation where your Second Amendment comes in. When they try this crap down in Texas, where if you're wearing a club patch, and you're considered a gang and try to take away your rights, they charge you with a crime like they did this gentleman. How in the hell does that even work? He applied. He got a CCD or whatever it's called down there. Concealed carry. The state approved him. Because he had no record. None of that stuff. But you're going to try to take away his rights. Because he's in an organization that you don't like. It's also embedded in the Constitution. You have a right to assembly. It does not say in the Constitution you can't be a part of this organization or that organization. It doesn't say that. Just because you're in a club doesn't take your way uh, your rights away. Even if it's listed on this stupid criminal organization list. I believe personally, and I don't understand why not, why haven't the bigger clubs sued 
the DOJ to take them off that list. Not everybody's a criminal in them uh, clubs like they claim they are. You know, you talk about one percenters. Well, I would have to freaking say it's under one percent that people are actually out there doing stuff like that. So if it's under one percent of the organization, then how the hell do you claim it's a criminal organization? You got people going to regular jobs, paying their houses, and all that good stuff. So again, how do you do it? You know, and I guess I'll uh, put a statement out to the clubs. I suggest somebody getting a damn lawyer and suing the hell out of them. Put it out in the public eye that, hey, this ain't who we are. This ain't what goes on in a club. It's nowhere near what they have to say. Put your argument out to the public. Now, I know a lot of people that come back and say, well, we don't care what the public thinks. And I always have the argument, and everybody knows, and I'll repeat it again, that civilians need to know that. The number one reason why is because they're the ones who elect these officials that pass these Ass nine laws like in Texas. When the bikers came together after Twin Peaks, you've seen the power that we have as a voting block. They took Abel Reyna's ass out of that position by 20 points, and he was an incumbent. That is unheard of in, in politics. But bikers got together, they worked, and made change happen. Maybe that's something NCOM might want to do. Say, hey, you know, we got all these attorneys laying around here. Let's put them to work. File suit against the DOJ to remove these clubs from that criminal list. Because if it's the case where... You, can o you only have a few people doing all the BS and everybody else gets blamed. That can apply to law enforcement. That can apply to politicians, especially here in Illinois with these corrupt bastards. You know, I don't know how many governors we've had go to prison. But you got to put it out there and you got to make the argument against them. It can't be where... You say, well, no, we're not going to do this type of stuff because we don't do that. Social media has blown it up where, for example, the AP Press Wire, where we get a lot of stuff for HarleyLiberty.com. It can post, boom, it's right up on our site within seconds because of our feeds. We pull it, it's in there. Same goes with the general public. You know, they got the Google News app on their phones, and depending on the cookies that you got on your phone, and no, I'm not talking about the eating cookies, guys, but the trackers where, say, you visited sites, that's what Google News is going to show you. So if you've been on HarleyLiberty.com or you've been on other, uh, you know, Easy Riders, whatever, it's going to show you that news. So it's instantaneous that those type of stories get out into the public. And that's the very reason why the old way of thinking doesn't apply anymore. It can't. In this day and age, you got to fight back or things get worse. Just like it has in Texas. The jury acquitted or the jury found this guy guilty. And this was uh, overturned on appeals. So think about it for a minute. They bought in 100% into the prosecution's argument that whatever club he was in was a gang and he shouldn't have a gun. Because citizens hear that gang crap and automatically you got, you're, you're on the defensive. They don't like gangs, you know. Lots come to their mind uh, on a juror's mind when you talk about gangs. 
that's why you got to make sure that clubs are not seen as gangs. And the only way to do that is to fight back. Now, am I in a club? No. Uh, you know, but I do believe in your rights. But more importantly, I believe in that Second Amendment. And anything and everything that tries to take that away from you, biker or not, you got to fight back. I believe this would have been a perfect case to do that on. At least mention it into an argument in a suit against DOJ. What do you guys think? Do you think it's important to start fighting back? You know, I got a. We know we have A bait. We got AMA, which I'll do a standalone video on AMA. I'm a big supporter of AMA. Uh, I know a lot of people out there ain't because of uh, what happened with the one percent deal. Uh, but AMA is actually a really awesome organization, and it also does fight for your rights. And I always say join A bait and stuff too because you got to fight for your rights. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section, all that good stuff. Let's get to the biker news. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Over a couple uh, or do some housekeeping duties, as I say. Out of uh, Texo uh, Mash uh, or WSCO. ID Thief says he was protecting someone from a motorcycle gang. Where do people come up with this stuff? Oh my god, it was just as bad as a story we covered way back in the day where a guy said he was doing heroin he was doing, and he was being chased by gang members. Dude was out of his freaking mind. Wichita Falls! A man arrested with ID cards belonging to another man told deputies... The man gave them to him to keep them out of the hands of the Kazakhs motorcycle gang. A Wichita County de uh, deputy said he saw a man and two women standing in the parking lot of the Old Browse shop on East Scott. Where they made a transaction. <laughs> he said the man saw him and went to the rear of the building and couldn't be located. Witness later told the deputy he saw the man running across the street to Canalita Motel, where deputies said they found him hiding in the abandoned car. Deputies patted him down and said they found a large knife on his hip and a large wallet in his right pocket containing another man's driver's license, five credit cards, and two debit cards. They said... James Hales told them the man had given him his wallet to prevent members of the Kazakhs from getting it. He was charged with fraud by possession of another person's ID information. Well, I guess this kind of could fit in to what I was talking about. They're blaming the Kazakhs, or this dude is, and they put it in the newspaper. This is what people are going to see. They don't care that we can see through that BS. All they're going to see is that the Kazakhs name were mentioned and the newspaper said it was a motorcycle gang. That's what they're going to see. That is the reason why you got to get out there and start educating the public. Because if you don't, this is all they're going to see. This is where it all starts. That's the reason why you got to get a hold of, and get out in front of this misinformation. Now, the trial of the century that's been in the news for like a month out of Australia. 
or New Zealand. I ain't saying which one until we get in the article because I forgot. And again, my geography sucks and these guys get pissed when I miss up the two. Kevin Chales, gang president, found guilty of money laundering and drug charges. The president... Sorry about that, I gotta fix this mic here. The president of the Common Chero Motorcycle Club has been found guilty of money laundering and conspiring to supply pseudofedrin, a precursor to methamphetamine. After more than four weeks, the high court trial against President Nafua Fua Fua. Yeah, that's my uh, way of doing it because you can't even read these damn names. Connor Michael Tamati Clausen and a woman with name suppression has come to an end. The trio were arrested following a series of raids across Auckland in April of 2019, in which more than seven point or three point seven million dollars in assets were seized, along with luxury cars, motorbikes, you know, motorcycles here in the states, high-end luggage, and jewelry. Hmm. On Wednesday, after a day and a half of deliberations, the jury found Nafua Fua guilty of two charges of money laundering in relation to the purchase of a Bentley and a Ford Ranger. Man, that must suck. <laughs> money laundering to get a Ford Ranger. Ouch. The gang boss was also found guilty along with Clausen of conspiring to supply pseudofedrin. The women was found guilty of laundering nearly $300,000 for the common sheriffs, which was used to purchase luxury cars. We're talking lots of money here. Lots of freaking money. Woo! Lots of money. Which they used to purchase luxury cars. Justice Graham Lang convicted the three defendants and will sentence Nafua Fua on November 24th. Clausen and the woman will be sentenced on the 9th of December. A media personality who has name suppression and accountant uh, were originally on trial alongside the trio. However, they had their charges of money laundering and participation in an organized criminal group formally discharged part way through the trial. I wonder if they decided they wanted to go along with the government for that. I'm just asking. Now, Fua Fua also had a charge of conspiring to import a Class A drug dropped. The common chair members and associates were arrested on the uh, in April of 2019 after a massive police search. In total, 18 were arrested, uh, and it just goes on and on. But here we go, man. He They were found guilty in the trial of the century over there in Australia. Good news, good news. Florida's Thunder Beach Motorcycle Rally back on for 2020. Panama City Beach. Thunder Beach is an annual event that draws tourists and motorcycle enthusiasts from all over the country. This year, because of the pandemic, it looked like it might not happen. But after much discussion between... Panama City Beach City Manager Tony O'Rourke and Thunder Beach staff, the event has been approved to take place in just over two weeks. 2020 marks the 20th anniversary of the annual Thunder Beach Rally after the Spring Rally was canceled earlier this year. It looks like fans and organizers wouldn't be able to celebrate the monumental milestone. And it was funny, the South Carol or the South Dakota governor, oh, I hope she runs for 2024. She's a hottie too. Uh, was talking today about how she didn't do all these closeouts and all that BS. And Sturges actually also happened, you don't hear about that anymore, where they were trying to claim that it would be a petri dish of the disease and it never turned out that way. They know how to run the program, baby. They do. And I think a lot of other people should take notice. Because these shutdowns are killing people, man. I believe that li literally. After the spring rally was canceled, uh, okay, we got that. 
Thunder Beach staff begin asking the city of Panama City Beach for approval for the fall rally in September, but couldn't get approval until Governor DeSantis moved into Phase 3. Quote, we sub resubmitted and we're working with the city manager very closely and we're able to finally get approval. It actually happened Monday evening. Thunder Beach production staff said they will also be taking uh, different sanitary measures to keep everyone safe. Organizers are strongly encouraging everyone to wear a mask while on site and will be providing them. Quote, our audience is very, very excited. We have been looking forward to this uh, ever since the spring rally was canceled. This event typically brings tens of thousands of people to the area and benefits the local economy during the slower season. Quote, Frank Brown Park and Harley Davidson of Panama City Beach will both be in the villages and hotspot during the event. We will not be able to have the pageant or large concerts. Uh, the rally will begin October 21st and run through the 25th. Now, to our main story and the reason for the monologue, Lubbock Motorcycle Gang member acquitted of misdemeanor weapons uh, charge. There you go again. It's in the title of the damn article. Motorcycle Gang Member. It's right there. That is what the citizens see. Gotta start fighting back against that. Gabriel Almonte, justice with the 7th Court of Appeals of Texas, ruled that a 54-year-old man's membership in a motorcycle gang, membership in a motorcycle gang, here it is again, was not enough to convict him on misdemeanor weapons charge that prohibits gang members from possessing guns. The September 28th ruling overturns 54-year-old Terry Martin's February 2019 conviction of a Class A misdemeanor count and unlawful carry of a weapon. A jury, here it is, in the Lubbock County uh, Court of Law, too, found Martin guilty and levied a $400 fine with no jail time. The jury. Now you know why it's important, because those citizens sit on a jury. Justices stated in their opinion that while there was evidence he was a member of a group that met the designation of a criminal street gang, the state failed to show that he was engaged in criminal activity as a gang member. Designation of a criminal street gang. Time to sue. Get in court. But uh, let's see here. Quote, both gang membership and connection to criminal conduct are required. So this is an opinion, which is a good thing. Uh, hopefully this, like, deters the cops from just pulling people over and they do everything right. And next thing you know, because they're wearing a vest, they take them to jail. Hopefully this is, uh, you know, in stone down there and they take note. Martin's conviction stemmed from an April, 20, or April 17, 2018 traffic stop by a corporal with the Lubbock County Sheriff's Office for traffic violations including speeding, making an unsafe uh, lane change, and having a uh, partially obstructed uh, license plate. During the stop, Martin told the corporal he had a weapon in his vest which bore the Kazakh's name and colors. Martin admitted to being a member of the Kazakh's uh, motorcycle club, which is recognized by Texas law enforcement as a criminal street gang. Defined by statute as three or more persons having a common identif or sign or symbol or an identifiable leadership who continuously or regularly associates in the commission of criminal activities. That is the statute. That is what they're throwing the clubs under. A gang member is one of three or more persons who continuously or regularly associate in the commission of criminal activities. Think about what that is just saying. And they're putting clubs into that category. The unlawful carrying of a weapon charge includes a provision that prohibits members of a criminal street gang from possessing a firearm. That is why it's important to fight for the Second Amendment. There is nothing, nothing in there that says because of your associations you can't have a gun. 
And if you're designated as a street gang, which raises the uh, eyebrows of these juries, you see what I'm saying here? You gotta fight it back. The corporal arrested Martin, who was booked in the Lubbock County Detention Center on the Class A misdemeanor. Under the statute, it is illegal for members of a criminal street gang to possess weapons. My question is, okay, you got criminal, you got uh, street gang members, but what if they don't got a record? So now you're broadly applying their membership to a bigger thing, kind of like they did with the Mongos in... Uh, What's it called? The California, which is going through appeals right now, where they Rico the whole damn club. How in the hell do you do that? I ask that all the time. How do you Rico a whole club on a criminal freaking conspiracy? Unreal. Martin appealed his conviction, citing 15 grounds, the last one citing inefficient evidence to show he met the criteria of a street gang member, prohibited from possession of firearm. However, Justice is rude only on the inefficient, uh, sufficiency argument, saying his trial counsel failed to preserve the other grounds, which challenged the constitution uh, of the statute for his appeal by not raising them at his trial. Well, ineffective counsel at that point, I would think. During Martin's trial, prosecutors called on the arresting deputy who told jurors he determined Martin was a member of the Cossacks based on Martin's omission during the stop and his attire which was the vest bearing the gang's black and yellow colors. He told jurors he was aware that the Cossacks Motorcycle Club is a criminal street game actively engaging in criminal activity in Lubbock. However, he said he did not know of any criminal charges filed against a Cossack members in the area. Well, the only thing I ha do have is just intelligence. The only thing I do have is just intelligence. A member of the Lubbock Anti-Gang Center who served as the state's gang expert at trial told jurors that the Cossacks is an outlaw motorcycle gang that operates nationwide engaging in assaults, threats of violence, intimidation, and illegal firearms possession. Really? Gang expert? Where's the proof? That they did it as an entire club. Where's the proof? Among the criteria used by Texas law enforcement to determine gang memberships include a judicious finding and self-identification by a person doing a judicial uh, proceeding. Martin also centered or also entered in the uh, Texas gang database for the McClellan County Sheriff's Office. Martin told jurors during the trial that he didn't believe the Cossacks was a criminal street gang. He also told jurors he has never been convicted of felony or a misdemeanor crime other than traffic violation. Among the evidence presented to the jury of Martin's uh, criminal record was a May 2015 arrest in connection with the fatal shooting in Waco involving the Cossacks, Banditos, and law enforcement. Oh. Have to bring that up, but uh, look what happened there. They only brought one freaking case to trial, and it was a uh, mistrial. Never retried really tried it. Everything was dismissed. I hope his attorney was smart enough to bring that up. The shooting resulted in nine deaths. However, the charge was dismissed and justice ruled that there was insufficient to prove that Martin was a gang member. There you go. Both gang membership and connection to criminal conduct are required, the justice wrote in the unpublished opinion. This single arrest on charges, were, which were later dismissed, does not establish that appellant continuously or regularly associated in the commission of a criminal activity. So some good news, not only for uh, the member, the Cossacks, and the club community down there. It's a big win, but it's a, a win for everybody. Ah, we already went over the Florida one. Now, Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. WBRC Hoover police officer wife arrested during traffic stop. Cocaine, marijuana, and guns were found. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Birmingham police are conducting a narcotics investigation involving a Hoover police officer. The suspects have been identified as Barry Erickson Stamps of Pelham and Mary Stamps. Birmingham police said 
On Monday afternoon, they conducted a traffic stop for speeding and failure to signal on I-459 North at exit 10. During the traffic stop, officers made contact with the driver, Mary Stamps, the passenger, Barry. The traffic stop yielded 27 grams of coke, 5 grams of marijuana. I still don't think it should be illegal. Only damn thing Illinois got right. And two handguns. Both were charged with possession with the tent. Second degree unlawful possession. Uh, all that good stuff. Barry Stamps and Mary Stamps will be uh, held at the Jefferson County Jail. Former charges are pending. He has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the internal investigation. Then, of course, they say no one is above the law and criminal activity by police officers will certainly not be tolerated. Believe it when we see it. Let's go to my final thoughts. China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the Hollywood and China Dow show. It is in the description box of all our platforms. Boy, is China getting used to this radio stuff, man. And she's also doing a lot of standalone uh, videos over on that channel. So go ahead and check it out. So what does everybody think about that decision in Lubbock, man? I really believe that is beneficial to all motorcycle clubs. Because there has to be intent and there has to they got to catch him in uh, the act. But I still say that he shouldn't have had to go through all that crap. I really don't. And I don't believe anybody, civilian, needs to go through that crap. Just because you have ties to the organization that the government believes to be criminal. I'll say it again. And what do you guys think? What do you motorcycle club members think? Don't you think that everybody should get together and do it through NCOM or something, get a lawyer, and go after this DOJ task force, whatever list that they're saying, and get the name of clubs removed? Or at least put up the fight. Well, wait a second here. If, you know, you can't call the, you know, the pot kettle black, whatever the hell it is, if the cops like the one we just did in the wall of shame is convicted of that kind of stuff, well, shouldn't law enforcement be considered a gang? It's only right. It's only right to think that way. And somebody really needs to put that forward. Because if you lay down your rights that you're guaranteed under the Constitution, you basically have no rights. That's why it's important to always fight back against the government. Yeah, they'll look at you as a fly on the wall, a nuisance. But that's what this country was built on, was fighting back. Just because a few do uh, some bad, oh my god, not everybody should be labeled. We're not Australia here in the United States. We do have a Bill of Rights. In Australia, man, they got these arcane laws. And I would argue that Texas kind of took a page out of their book. Took a page out of a book of a foreign country of what they're doing with their clubs over there. Over there, you know, you can't have a couple people get together or, you know what? You're conspiring. You're a criminal organization. Or ban clubs outright in Denmark or wherever it is over in Europe. That's the stuff that you got to fight back against. And even if you're a club member, that's why it's important to be a member of ABATE or, you know, the other biker rights organizations. Man, I'm freaking real. And then you got your trial of the century over in Haas or New Zealand, wherever the hell it is. With that, they finally found them uh, guilty. Lots of money rolling over there, man. Lots of freaking money. And then you got to ask yourself, if you're playing devil's advocate, well, if it's legitimate, how the hell did you get it? I don't know any legitimate business. Well, yeah, you know, I can't go into that route. Uh, but uh, to put up the argument, that's a lot of freaking money, man. $3.7 million. Got caught red-handed with the stuff. You know, you can't go and say, you know, I w you can't come up with the excuse. There's nothing uh, you know, that 
you can even put forward with that when you're caught red-handed, man. Uh, but Florida Bike Week, uh, that's awesome news, man. Uh, the 20th anniversary is going. Great stuff right there. But uh, what do you guys think of the argument with the Second Amendment? Don't you think you guys need to fight for this stuff? Get behind the fight, man. Get involved. Uh, don't forget again, uh, tonight over on uh, Hollywood and China Dow, always some good freaking stuff over there. With that, I'll talk to you on the next segment, guys. Mm -hmm.